It's funny because when I look at my relationship with my mom now, it was entirely different than it was just, you know, five years ago. Um, when I was in my early 20s, when I was in my late teens, she would give me advice when I was in my early teens, actually. She would still give me advice, and I just flat out wouldn't listen. It would be great, wonderful, life-changing, financial abundance, giving health-benefiting advice. You know, brush your teeth every day, floss. Hey, you may want to focus on your homework so then you can get a better job. It's like good mom advice. You, you know the kind I'm talking about. But I just flat out wouldn't listen to her. Even if it was to my detriment, I wouldn't listen to her. And I'd be like, you know, I'll do the opposite of what she says. And the thing was, the reason for that was because I wanted to maintain the sanctity of my free will. Like, don't tell me what to do above all else. Please don't tell me what to do. So when she actually gave me space and let me do what I wanted, then I was able to... <laughs> Like, say, and turn around and go, you know, you're right, I need to do the thing that you told me to. But when she tried to force it to me, I would never, ever, ever do it. And so even today, though, I say stop suggesting things, and she still suggests stuff. So, Mom, if you're watching, stop suggesting things. But at the same time, it's the moment when she asks, can I suggest something, that I let her. So today, we're going to talk about what to do when people with Asperger's won't listen what to do when you try and give them advice, but they are just sitting and shutting you down and blatantly ignoring you, even if that advice is stuff that is actually going to really, really benefit them. So as usual, before we do that, let's say hi to everybody here. Um, let's see. Uh, Rebecca, it looks like you have caps lock on. Uh, Lynette says, so very true. Prescott, Arizona, says Robin. Hello. Um, hi from rainy Cali. Thank you for, for one uh, time. It's, it's sunny here in Seattle and it's rainy over there. That's usually the, the opposite way. Uh, Megan says, hi. Dana says, hi. Uh, Julie says, hello from California. Diana says, that's my son. He always comes to uh, place at Nerd all the time. He's always on the fence. He can't see that we are on the same team. Honestly, that's because you really aren't on the same team. We're going to talk about that today. Um, rain in Idaho, too. We're just talking about the weather and everywhere, I guess, today. So, um, Rebecca, caps lock gets you attention, but I, I'm not going to answer your questions just because they're caps lock. So you might want to turn it off because, yeah, I'm not going to give you attention in that way. Um, Megan says, my, my son is always in defense mode. Ed says, hello from New York. Well, hello there. Devin UK. Well, hello. You, you, get, you win farthest award of the day so far. So um, today we're talking about what to do when people with Asperger's won't listen. And again, it comes down to if you are trying to fight them, if you're trying to get them to, if you're trying to be in a state of forcing them to or saying, yeah, I know that's what's best for you without them feeling hurt and without them feeling like they're a valid person that can do whatever, then it is never going to work. In other words, if you want them to get to eat teriyaki chicken, as an example, you don't say eat the teriyaki chicken, eat the chicken, eat the chicken, eat the chicken. You say you can make whatever you want, but I've already made chicken here if you want it. And then because that they go, okay, I'll have it because you are preserving the sanctity of their free will. Whenever you don't preserve the sanctity of the free will, whenever you try and control, whenever you try and get attention, whenever you try and yell, fight, scream, manipulate, control, lack of trust, basically whenever there's any lack of trust, then they will just say no, and they will preserve the sanctity of their free will so much that they will just ignore you and drive themselves into the ground because nobody will take away my ability to make decisions on my own. I don't care. That's how they feel. And so if you try and take that away, you will not take that away. They will take it back. And then you will be frustrated about how you can't get them to do anything because they will maintain their free will, period. End of story. There is no not doing that. You can, make, you can make them really, really afraid and really, really scared, but that is a recipe for suffering and disaster. Basically, if you want to screw up your child for life, 
Convince them to do things out of fear. That is a great way to literally kill them faster, and I mean that actually because biologically you're going to create so much stress that they will shorten their life. So, am I abundantly clear? I hope so. So today, again, we're talking about how to help somebody with Asperger's listen so they actually hear you. What to do when they don't listen. So, what do you do when they don't listen? Well, first, I'm looking at my notes here. First, you want to start by listening to them. Truly listening. Then be genuinely curious and hear them. That's it. We're going to break this down in just a second right after the break. So see you in just a sec. I would like to officially invite you to join us in person for a weekend workshop we call Deep into Defense Mode Live. The next dates are November 12th and 13th, 2016 in San Francisco, California, February 11th and 12th, 2017 in Orlando, Florida, and May 20th and 21st in Los Angeles, California, and that is 2017 as well. You can get more details and register at aspergerexperts.com slash workshop. We only have 50 spots available for each location. And the reason why I love this is because this is my opportunity to meet you in person, to help you understand what it is to be in defense mode and how to get out. And really, you know, coach some people, help some people, interact with some people, have lunch with some people, dance with some people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about gaining new experiences and new tools. So if you are wondering what it's like to be a part of the Didim Live seminar, watch this. I'm Ty Miller, and I came out here with my son, Austin, uh, who has Asperger's. And what I perceived what was going to happen was it was just going to be instructions directly to my son, Austin, on things he can do or needs to do to improve, to make his life easier, both socially, academically. But what I learned were the tools that, that I need to obviously uh, earn more of his trust, but also but the tools I've learned are going to help him as, as well as myself. But the the most important thing is you know he lives with us he's in and and of course his home our home but i have learned some great tools that help me that will in turn help him and i see exactly how it's going to work and and this 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 was a great seminar i was pleased with everybody and i highly suggest this to to anyone you know obviously with a child with asperger's but really it's just a great course for anybody and uh that's it So welcome back. Today we are talking about what to do when your Asperger's child or really anybody with Asperger's won't listen. When you're giving them really good, life-changing, health-giving, financially abundant advice that is going to actually help them in their life, but they are saying, no, I don't want to do it. So here's the golden rule. When they won't listen, you listen. In other words, if they're saying, nah, nah, I don't want to hear it, this is a time for you to listen to them. That means shut up and listen. Not to say something, not to manipulate, not as a tactic, not to force them, not to get them to do anything, not for any ulterior motive other than just to listen because you're going to listen. To listen, to hear them, to understand them, and for no reason other than that. When they aren't going to listen, you listen. You listen to them. You hear them. You understand them. You ask questions to uh, clarify that understanding. You be curious. And then you listen some more. And you provide a safe space for them where you are saying you are completely okay exactly as you are. Because the moment you say through your words, through your actions, through your body language, through your tone of voice, through the environment in which you live, through any mode of communication whatsoever, especially if your influence circles are not aligned. We'll talk about that in, in just a second. But if you do that and you aren't able to hold the space for them and you're saying you aren't defined the way you are because we need to change you, they will go screw you and they will refuse to change. And then you have a stalemate. The minute that you listen and truly listen just to listen, suddenly everything gets better. Suddenly, they feel heard and they're totally willing to do whatever it is that you're suggesting. But if you do, if you do not listen, and mom, I'm talking to you too, um, 
Because my mom does this a lot. If they do not listen, then we will not listen. In other words, if they don't listen, then you listen first. And you listen to listen. You don't listen as a tactic. You don't listen as a tool. You don't listen as a strategy to get them to. You don't listen as a strategy to make them or force them or manipulate them or get them to be something that they're not. You listen to listen and understand and let them emotionally process. Then they will feel heard and then you can go forward. In other words, back off. This is the big problem that I see parents is that they're so on it. They're so like, and what it really comes down to is, is parents that a lot of times you feel uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable, so you feel like you need to change your son in order to change your daughter in order to feel comfortable again. That's a recipe for suffering if I ever heard one. It, it won't work. The, we explain this a lot through the concept of influence circles. And that is that somebody if you're talking to somebody and you're trying to get a big result, in other words, that you're, you're trying to influence your son to, let's say, um, take a shower. The big result you want is not for your son to take a shower. The big result is that you want him to you know, be healthy and, and socially accepted. But if you're trying to get your child to take a shower out of anxiety, they will feel that and they will just say never. And they, they know, in other words. There's a lot more about influence circles on our website. You can go to aspergerexperts.com slash influence to learn the entirety of the influence circles concept. Um, highly, highly suggest that you go read that. We just put out a course on influence circles and people are saying that it's the best course that they've ever gone through us because they, they understand what type of influencer they are. Are they a carrot and stick influencer? Meaning are they always trying to man manipulate? Or are they a holistic influencer based in trust? Basically, the core message here at AE is stop, allow, stop trying to manipulate it or change it. Just let everything be as it is. You don't need rewards. You don't need punishment. You don't need manipulation. You don't need forcing. You just need trust and you just need love. And from that place, if you're actually listening, that's how you get people to listen. So again, I'm going to say this. When they won't listen to you, you listen to them. And you listen to actually listen, not as a tool or tactic or manipulation. It's a simple concept. I mean, there's really not much to it other than else. So let's see what's happening. Um, Lynette says, I used to say I was just letting, or I just wanted, or I just thought. That's red flags. I'm not listening and trying to force the reasons on them. Yeah. Doreen says, you can't force them anyway. Of course, I can't scare them. I always listen to her, but I feel she doesn't hear me either. I think there needs to be a give and take. That is coming from Aspie yourself. I always tell her she's okay. Uh, she's okay who she is. I think she's perfect, but she also needs to talk. Why does she need to talk? I think you're you're you're, you're putting those expectations on her. She doesn't need to talk. Um, sometimes backing off though creates issues. Also, what I would say is that backing off wouldn't actually create issues unless you're enabling. If you're enabling, like there's a difference between backing off and giving them space while still holding boundaries and backing off and letting them walk all over you. And, and that's the, the difference is that if you back off and just let them play video games all day and not go to school, that's, that's not healthy either. But if you back off to give them space and say you're completely fine the way you are, but there are still boundaries that need to be held. Yes, I love and accept you. Yes, you still need to eat the damn carrot. You know, like the, the, you can do both. They aren't mutually exclusive. A lot of people don't get that they're these mutually exclusive things where, oh, if I back off, then that just means I'm going to let them do whatever. No, if, if you back off, then that means you're holding space for them. And there's a difference and a distinction. Um, Rachel says, how does that apply to things like homework and non-preferred tasks that must be done? Um, and, and Re Rebecca says, backing off isn't the same as ignoring. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So Rebecca, your question, how does that apply to things like homework and non-preferred tasks that must be done? You can still say, look, I understand you don't want to do the homework. I, I hear you and you can tell, let, let me listen to you about all the reasons why homework is, is irritating and stuff. But that's sort of the world we live in. So you still need to do your homework. Like I hear you and I, and I, and I understand your feelings, but we're not going to let how you feel determine what you do. Does that make sense? Like, I'm really anxious. That's great. Let's sit with that. Let's let's ride the anxiety wave for a second and come out the other side and we'll be less anxious. And let's let's deal with that. Let's take five minutes to do that. Now you still need to go do your homework. 
Like, it, it, uh, the way you feel doesn't have anything to do with what you do, but I'm still going to honor the way you feel. Does that make sense? Uh, Doreen says, I want to understand her. That's why I want her to talk. Maybe she doesn't want to be understood right now. Give her space. Back off. Let her just be her instead of of her. If she, and she says, uh, if she doesn't talk, I can't understand her. And then she says, I don't know why. I don't know is code for I'm uncomfortable, which is code for I'm not being accepted in the moment, which is code for I'm really overwhelmed. So back off. In the USA, is there enough support for people with Asperger's? Uh, that's that's a weird, I don't know the answer to that question. That's sort of a weird question. What do you mean by support? Like, we're here and we're worldwide, but are you like talking logistics? There's, that's, yeah, it's a weird question. Um, how long do you give them space? As long as they need space help for them. And again, space being held for them is very distinct and different than a time where you're just ignoring and letting them do whatever. Like if they need a day to process, you give them a day to process. Why would they, why would you need anything less? Like, let me put you to you this way. It's like, how much food do I give them? Well, you give them enough food until they're full. And then once they're full, then you don't give them food anymore. It's, it's the same idea of like, how much space do I give them? Enough space until they, they need to process. You know, it's like, when should I give them food? When they're hungry. When should I give them space? When they need it. How much space should I give them? The amount they need. What if you give space, but then they just disregard the issues and refuse to address it later? That means that they need more space. That means they're still afraid, and you may need to listen deeper and validate more. Um, Rebecca says, how old is your child? I, I, oh, T. Okay. Um, not me. I was like, I don't have a kid. Um, <laughs> Holly's saying perfectly. They need to feel unconditionally loved. I must really break that down. Unconditionally. As in, without any conditions. As in, I will love you if... No, that's not unconditional. Like, literally, unconditional. If you have a condition, I don't care what the condition is. I don't care what the purpose of the condition is. I don't care if the purpose of the condition is to help them achieve their best life. Unconditional. Zero conditions. If you have any conditions, good or bad, that is not unconditional. And that also applies to when you're going to give love, but the amount that you're going to give love. If you're only going to really give love when you approve of them in a certain way, that's not unconditional either. And it's damaging. Like, I heard a quote the other day that forgiveness can't change the past, but it can certainly change the future. Like, you are actually... By, by allowing unconditional love, forgiveness, trust, all those wonderful things that we discuss about, healing their future. Think about that for a second. Let's take a few more questions here. Um, Vanessa says I loved her unconditionally, which is why I feel the need to discuss the issues so I can better understand, but she just wants space and walks away and refuses to any or any rationale. I, I don't know what those particular issues are, but if she wants space, A, give her space. But I don't know what the particular issues are. Are they issues that you co-create and share, or are they just issues that you have? And what they are always conditioning us. My daughter is eight, and she's always conditioning us. What do you mean by she's always conditioning you? Why don't you just not let her condition you? Like, uh, what is she conditioning you about? So that, that would be my question. Um... Star says, I couldn't agree more with my 11-year-old son. He often shows no care and urgency at home or school. It gets very difficult to do them homework, go to bed on time, or any responsibilities. It sounds like, A, he just doesn't have aligned values with you. Like, he's just like, I don't understand why I should care about this. So you may need to help him understand why it's important to care about this. But the problem with that is that then you realize that a lot of the things that you, quote, unquote, should care about in life, there isn't actually any basis or rationale. So he's just like, this is stupid. I'm not going to do this, and you really can't do anything other than say, look, this is just what you need to do now. Kim says, what do you do if they absolutely refuse to do things like bathe or go to school? And since they bathe or go to school, throws them in a violent meltdown. Hear them. Listen. Like, hear them and say, okay, what? let's talk about this. What, do you, what are your concerns? What are you feeling? What, like... And you work through that with them. They are obviously not at a place to be able to do these things. They're deep in defense mode. So hear them. 
Um, and Bhakti says, was saying the about the my daughter's conditioning me. I won't do this unless you do this for me. It's like, why don't you just say that's not the way that this works? Is We don't have a tit-for-tat relationship. We all do things for each other. But we don't do them if I do this, if you do this for me. This isn't a barter system. It's not how things work. So um, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back answering more of your questions about what to do when they won't listen. See you in just a sec. Every single day, we are trying to use influence. We are trying to influence ourselves. We are trying to influence another person. We are trying to influence the relationship that we have between people, places, and things. And a lot of the times, our influence is ineffective. Now, but before we talk about influence, we really need to define it. And when you look at the etymology of where the word influence came from and what its true meaning is, it means any outpouring of energy that produces effect. So anytime there is any outpouring of energy that produces any effect, then that is influence. So you could say I'm influencing you right now because I am pouring out energy in terms of speech and, and sound, and it is producing an effect. Now the trick is making it produce the effect that we want it to. I get parents all the time asking, how do I get my kid to be motivated? Or how do I overcome my own anxieties and worries? And they're asking essentially, how do I influence myself or someone else or the relationship as a whole? And a lot of people think that influence looks like this. You take an action and you get the big result. Now, when we say big result, we mean the thing that you are seeking through the thing. So if you're trying to motivate your kid to do their homework, you don't want them to do their homework. You want them to do their homework so they get good grades, so they get into a good college, so they have a good life. So the big result is good life full of fulfillment and financial ease, right? And the actions that we may take are get them to do their homework through whatever means. And this is how influence works for most people. What action do I need to take in order to get the result I want? That's the question that comes from that. But the problem is that most people don't see that there is an entire other section to influence that they are completely unaware of. It's past the line of the invisible. You have the motivation and emotion, you have the meaning and you have the intent. And once you align those three, then the action becomes apparently obvious and you get to the big result. So we've gotten a lot of questions over the break about, but what if in this situation, how do, what happens? And what if in this situation, what happens? And what if in this situation? And I want to repeat the core message here. If they aren't listening, you listen. If they are overwhelmed, if they are shutting down, if they are meltdowns, if anytime you say anything that they freak out, that means that you listen. Time to hold space for them. Like, the answer is, if they aren't listening, you listen. Listen to listen, not to manipulate, not to force, not to make, not to enforce, not to regulate, not to, to control, but to listen. Rebecca's asking, where did we get that, that chart? And we made that chart. Um, <laughs> this is what we do, Rebecca, uh, is we help people out with this. So. Um, we have a few questions I specifically really want to address here. Kian is asking, how do you enforce hygiene? What do you do if they refuse to shower, bathe, or and wash their hair? First of all, you don't try to enforce hygiene. You start from a basis of trust. And if they aren't listening, you listen. You listen to them. You figure out, hey, this is really overwhelming. Let's work through this together. Um, Carrie asks, does writing things down like a to-do list of things that has to be done help? Once you've listened, if you're just trying to force them to do stuff while skipping the listening step, it'll just overwhelm them even more. If you're co-creating the uh, to-do list with them, once you have listened to them, then it'll work. And Diane is asking, my son wants his space and sometimes will use rude words to get people to back off. Um, he's doing that because the people aren't giving him space. Imagine this is the kids, spill more space, more space, more space, blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa, because He's used all of his other tools. So he is going to get people to back off using whatever means because they haven't listened to him when he says, I need my space, I need my space, I need my space. And then he just curses at them to get them to back off. So give him space. He's using it as a very effective tool because nobody is listening to the more subtler ways. So he needs to shock people in order to get them to back off. It's a, like, again, really simple. Um, Vanessa, but she expects me to hear her and listen and understand, but she can't seem to give that back yet. 
yet. Everything becomes one-sided right now. Because she thinks I don't understand but won't take time to hear my own rationale. You need to listen to her first. Once you have gotten her to a place, then she will be able to listen. It is not a tit-for-tat relationship right now. You are correct. It will be only when you listen. You need to go find somebody else that you can feel heard with, whether that's a therapist. Your daughter is going to be unable to provide that to you right now. You need to be the one that is providing the listening to her. She can't listen to you right now because she is so shut down that literally the parts of her brain responsible for emotional connection just aren't working. She is so stressed out. Like when you think about it, it's a, literally a biophysical reaction that is going on and a neurological reaction where she is unable to listen to anybody because she is so stressed. The way you help her feel less stressed is by listening. Uh, my son is addicted to anything with a screen. We'll even sit watch infomercials. I wouldn't use the word addicted. I'd say intrigued because that thing actually does a really good job at listening to him. Whereas I'm guessing a lot of people just don't, and so he finds a way. Lynette says one of the things to do is, and one of the hardest things to do is just listen. Listen without filters. It's really about cha you changing to become healthy. Your child is, changing, is telling you what they need. I would say it's actually one of the easiest things, but it's also one of the hardest things. The problem being that a lot of people just get really, really uncomfortable doing it because they've never done it before. So they try and change anything to get that to, to happen easier. And yet they're like, but I want, but I want, it's like, listen, if they aren't going to listen, you listen. It's, it's simple advice. It's just that it is really uncomfortable for some people. So don't make being uncomfortable the villain. Make it just sort of something that happens. Annie's saying, I find at, right after school is the most stressful and where my son needs to decompress because he has been surrounded uh, by loud all day. He says he's making fists all day and he comes home and he needs to unmake fists. Yeah, he needs time to, to decompress and time to just sort of be him. So again, listen, allow, time for decompression. And then, oh, and then things get better. But if you're always trying to, to manipulate and force and, and listen and, and, and sorry, not listen, then you're always going to be stuck on step one. How does the one, how does one listen when the child is screaming and crying? By listening to understand. Like the same way, it's just like that sounds t tough. Vanessa's asking, how do you let them know you are listening? You don't need to let them know you are listening. You just need to listen. Like, you don't need to say, see, I'm listening now because that's not you listening, that's talking. If you listen, you listen. And then they will know you're listening because you are listening. Does that make sense? It, again, it's, it's like, just listen. Unconditional love. A lot of people have trouble with this because it is so simple. They're like, but, they, but there must be other contingencies. No, just, just listen. Listen. Like, if they choose selective mutism, cool, still listen. Be with them, just like literally sit with them. Listening doesn't mean that they need to speak. Listening means that you just need to hear their whole being. As Doreen is saying, the action of listening proves that you listened. Uh, Greg is saying, my son is socially awkward at school, joined the club, and when we want him to wear earmuffs to help at school, I'm afraid it will be an excuse not to interact with students. Um, what, how does having earmuffs relate to being socially awkward? I'm, I'm missing a, a piece here. Is there a, an issue with him having loud noises? Or is it just that I, I, I'm, I'm missing something here? Um, because I wouldn't just, yo, you're socially awkward, let's put earmuffs on you. That sounds a little bit like that's it's going to make you more socially awkward. But um, so um, we are going to take uh, one more break really quickly. We will be back. We're answering more of your questions, and I want to talk to you a little bit about all the cool stuff we have coming up. So see you in just a sec. Uh, my name is Lynn. I've been a part of the Osberger Experts Parent Support Group uh, for the last year. I'm a happy customer of many wonderful AE videos and online courses. Uh, I, I just always look forward to the next course offering because because it's it, it always I consider it adding to my toolbox um, of skills and knowledge. Uh, the parent support group is, is really an amazing group of parents. 
Uh, anybody can ask a question uh, and you're almost guaranteed a very quick response from caring and supportive parents. Uh, the ideas and the, the suggestions uh, that, that come out of that group are, are really are really just high quality. Um, and, and there's a number of parents too that also have been diagnosed with Asperger's and they have a very unique way of, of looking at things that help us to understand our children better and, and why some approaches uh, might work better than others. So again, it's just an amazing group of parents I've gotten a lot of just positive energy uh, from being part of that parent support group. And uh, a couple of things uh, that if you ask me what the most important thing is for parents to know, it would be really understanding defense mode and the sensory funnel. Over and over again, I, I, I just come back to the defense mode and, and sensory funnel uh, videos and, and really having a good understanding of that. A lot of parents will say, oh, it looks like my child is being lazy. Uh, I see them sitting at the computer a lot. But defense mode can really masquerade as, as other behaviors. So a lot of times, if parents don't really understand what's going on inside of their children, it might just look like laziness or manipulative behavior. Uh, when in reality, uh, your son or daughter might be experiencing a lot of anxiety or sensory overload or overwhelm. Uh, so once you really understand the, the sensory funnel and defense mode, uh, then you can really truly begin to connect with your child and to also help them to help themselves and, and to help them move their lives forward and, just, and to really start living their lives. Um, the other important thing that, that I have found is, is really framing your family culture as one of a team and making sure that your son or daughter feels like they're part of the team and existing within the family culture and not outside of the family culture. I think any there's lots of things that parents can do uh, to, to, to improve the family culture, such as establishing uh, fun traditions uh, that the child enjoys, uh, playing games with the children, watching their favorite TV shows. Uh, if they like cooking, then you can cook together. If they like uh, taking the dog for a walk, you can, you, can take, you can go on dog walks. But it's really just finding those things that your child enjoys and then making them part of your family traditions. And, and I think that that's um, something that brings out the best in everybody in the family. And absolutely, I would recommend AE, the course offerings and the parent support group. I just appreciate all that you've done and, and, and I appreciate all of the parents as well. Thank you. So it's funny how uh, the questions that we've been getting over the break. Uh, Tina's saying, comprehension is a problem for my kid. How do I help? I constantly explain things over and over. First of all, Tina, I feel your pain. And we have a lot of correlations between this show and what you're talking about because, you know, literally for the past 34 minutes, I've been pretty much just saying one word. Listen, listen, what do you do in this case? Listen, what do you do in that case? Listen, what do you do in this case? Listen. So. I sort of share the frustration of, of a comprehension issue at times, but let me tell you this. It's, it's like, and in particular, we'll use the listening as an example of some people just don't get not to, j just to listen, right? But it's not that they don't get to listen, they get just to listen, but they have objections, they have but what ifs, they have what about in this circumstance, they have I feel like this is a problem, like I'm being overwhelmed or, or that, there's other stuff on top of it. So. When you have a comprehension issue, number one, uh, is it a comprehension issue or is it an objections that haven't been met issue? There's a distinction there. And for like the majority of the people that, that don't understand listening, it's not that they don't understand listening, they do. It's a really simple concepts, shut up and listen, right? And listen to listen, not for any other purpose, but then they have objections and other things. Also, I would say, is there a way that you explaining it, like have you tried other ways of explaining it? Because sometimes they already know what you mean and you just need to speak their language so that they say, oh, you mean this thing. Uh, Juan is saying 20 years, of, uh, 20 years and anything is running. No school, only being in his room. We are desperate. Juan, if you're desperate, first of all, try listening and try a completely different approach. Um, second of all, learn about defense mode. This is what we do here at Asperger Experts. Go to aspergerexperts.com slash free class. Or hey, if you're really, you know, if you want to, 
Join us for Deep in Defense Mode Live. Next one is November 12th and 13th in San Francisco. AspergerExperts.com slash workshop. There's a link right above. Um, and yeah, that's what I would do. Amanda saying my daughter just sometimes resorts to acting like an animal after school to decompress. We just play along. Is that what you do as well? Yeah, it's not it's not a problem. She's acting like an animal. That may be weird, but that's not dangerous or anything. So if that's her way of decompressing, cool. Let her decompress by acting like an animal. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Jennifer saying my son has zero motivation to do anything other than stare at a screen. I would disagree with that. I, uh, when you look at what he's doing on the computer, he has a lot of motivation to do other things and he's getting all of his needs fulfilled through the computer. And I think that your perception of him saying he has no motivation is actually creating the reality that he has no motivation. What I mean by that is a thing called the Pygmalion effect. You can look it up, but essentially your expectations create other people's reality. If I expect somebody to be the person who has no motivation, I'm going to see every instance of that, and I'm just going to suddenly enforce it with my behaviors and my expectations upon them. Trying to get him to do anything, uh, that again implies that you're trying to use control and manipulation, which doesn't work. And so therefore, he's sort of shutting down, and, and he's completely overwhelmed, and he's retreating into the world of computers. So it's very common with people with Asperger's, but honestly, it's more common with the parents because they really don't know what to do. And they just think they have no motivation. They're on the computer all day long. And then you find out that they've been doing all this cool stuff on the computer. Like if literally they were just staring at a screen and the screen wasn't moving and it was just like a blank screen. Sure. But that's not what's happening. They're, they're actually getting a lot of their stuff through it. And then you not seeing that is honestly, I think, what the problem is because then you're sort of creating that reality. And Tanya says, after weeks of wanting my son to do his schoolwork, I listened to him and we brought the responsibility agreement and agreed to terms now that we did do schoolwork. After discussing and listening and setting up the responsibility agreement, uh, if you wanted to get it, it's aspergerexperts.com slash RA, by the way. Um, setting up, it, he had a complete meltdown when he had to do his part of the agreement, so we're back to square one. I wouldn't say you're back to square one. I'd say that the you got a ton of feedback on what worked and what didn't for the agreement, and now you just reiterate and do round two. And like, you don't expect things to just work right off the bat. That That's silly. You get feedback, and, and you improve upon them. The first time you cook a meal, you know it's going to sort of be like, oh, there are things I can improve. Just like the first time you try and do a responsibility agreement, it may not work. You just go and do round two. Well, that obviously didn't work. You need less expectations. So, you know, let, let's whittle it down to the point where you can actually do it and then work up from there. And what the responsibility agreement is showing in that case is he is not able to respond, responsibility, ability to respond in that case. So that means literally he just doesn't have the ability to respond to that yet. So, cool, help get him out of defense mode more, and then he'll build the ability to respond for that. Uh, question, why is it I get really stressed and takes me time to calm down? Robert, that is like the question of how Asperger's works. If you just go into aspergerexperts.com, we have an entire video series about that. Like, it, there's an entire set of videos on a YouTube channel about how Asperger's works. Um, essentially, the part of your your nervous system that controls being stressed less isn't working so well. That's the shortest version I can um, do it. Uh, Cleo says, can you have mild Asperger's? Yeah, that's, a, yes, it's, it's a spectrum. Uh, you can totally have mild Asperger's or severe or whatever you want, really. Um, Doreen says, I couldn't agree with the no motivation. They don't see what they've really been doing. What my daughter does on the game is amazing, yeah. I mean, that's that's the truth of the reality. Um, are there support groups for teens with social problems due to Asperger's? Uh, we're in the process of creating one. Hey, surprise, we're in the auth process of creating one. It will be available hopefully in the next year. Um, right now, we do have a Minecraft server, though, for kids and teens with Asperger's to hang out. And that is if you go to aspergerexperts.com slash support, you can join that. Um, my son never lets me finish the sentence and shuts down. Okay. Um, it sounds like he's really in defense mode, so I'd go and really work on getting him out of defense mode. Um, Sharon's asking, my daughter copes well at school. I'm told but coming home every day and has completely lost her voice. Uh, I, that isn't really a problem in and of itself. If she's lost her voice, it sounds like she just needs to rest and not talk that much. Like, And it sounds like school is just exhausting for her. So... I mean, I wouldn't really see that as a problem in and of itself. 
Like, a lot of people think this is a problem when reality is like, is it a problem in the current moment or are you just worried that it could be a problem in the future? And in which case, the worrying is the issue, not the actual thing. Um, so, we are going to end it here for today. We'll be back on tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, that is 4 p.m. Central, sorry, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Uh, Central, 6 p.m. Pacific, ta- 6 p.m. Eastern, rather, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow, and um, we will be on to talk about a whole bunch more awesome stuff. So, I uh, hope to see you at Deep in Defense Mode live this, uh, like, two weeks now, November 12th and 13th in San Francisco, California, AspergerExperts.com slash workshop. See you then. Talk to you tomorrow. You have a great day. Bye.